Hello and welcome once again to another whiskey review with me, the Whiskey Novice. Thank you for joining me for what is review number 114 and the start of a, a short series in which I'm looking at some 10 year old Scotch single malts. Now I did a series almost a year ago doing the same thing and it was always my intention to come back and do more. So here we are and here we are with a little Diageo number from the heart of space side there, a thrust. This one, uh, the Athrust 10 year old was originally uh, pretty much a singleton, put out as, as one of the singletons. That name now reserved for, uh, let me see, Dufton, Glenorg and, uh, Glenordry and Glen Dullen, that's the one. Uh, got there in the end. Uh, but then I think Athrust sort of took off and became part of the flora and fauna. It's still a relatively young distillery in the scheme of things. Construction started in 1972, finished in 1974. And I think the intention for a thrust was always to be a, a basically a made for blends. It was malt for blends, but I think then that all changed rather rapidly. And it, and it became the single malt that we know. Now, you don't see an awful lot of them out there. This, the 10 year old, there are older expressions but expect to pay a lot for them so there you go what do we know about this one 43 percent it's diageo so which it doesn't say anything on the label doesn't say anything in the box we imagine that it, it's chill filtered we imagine there's color added what's it like in the glass well initially it's quite thick quite syrupy quite rich you almost get that impression of it. Well, it does have a thick nose feel, of a, a, a thick syrupy nose feel, but agitate it, give it a chance to settle, agitate it again, and then you find those sweet, floral, honeyed notes that I come to expect almost from a Speyside whiskey, a non sherried Speyside whiskey, I should say. The, to me, Speyside whiskey does have a feel. There's a, a menthol note running through all that, all those light floral honey notes, as I said. There's a menthol note runs through the middle as well. And then all these tones are quite bold once you've sifted through them once once they start to settle out then you start to get creamy caramel light hazelnut praline this is fully matured in ex-bourbon casks so you're not getting there's no hint of uh, sherry maturation or, or peat or anything like that in there you are really expecting all that Creamy caramel, almost maybe a slight oakiness. As I said, I'm getting a light creamy caramel and almost a hazelnut praline, and then slight, slight hints of pencil shaving. So that's where your your wood, your oakiness is, is playing in here, into the palate. Slightly better sweet. Delivery. You almost expect more than what you get. Quite dry. In, in that, there's quite a lot. Those those notes in the nose are quite bold. But when it reaches the palate on the initial pass, you get that bittersweet delivery. It goes quite dry, quite quick. But it's like all on go back in. That is just your delivery. You expect a rush of flavour. And that's when you go back in, that you start to get that rush of flavour. That creamy caramel's there. There are citrus notes. Orange. Lime. It's even kind of savoury. Slightly meaty. Herbal. The honey, the floral notes are all there. 
and takes it to settle down. It's weird, there's quite a lot going on. And they all tend to play separately from each other at the start. But it's once it settles, then they all start to come together. For what is a very, very pleasant tram. Relatively short finish, but not unpleasant. It's not unpleasant short. It's, it's short, it's quite fleeting, but it's quite fresh. There's a little zingy heat, little zingy set, citrusy heat. Or something I suppose to be the way you could describe it it's almost like a yet again it is like a limey thing almost it's a, it, I would suggest that this is an ever-changing whiskey and it ever is it ever changing for the better it, it definitely does improve as you go along it's, it's not a bad start, but it just gets better. I'm going to add a little water. Only 43%. But it, it, to me, this actually does take a little bit of water. Let it settle. You ain't going to see any cloudiness here. But let that water settle in it for a while. I don't get the opportunity to do so here. But here's what happens. It relieves it of that thickness. Yeah, in a good way. And it all becomes a bit fresh, sweet, floral, honeyed notes, creamy caramel. Yeah, very pleasant. Very pleasant in the nose. It does to me actually take a little bit of water in this one to, to make it the whiskey that I like. That little drop of water doesn't do the palate any harm either. It softens it. It takes a bit of the grip out of it, but I think this needs to be a bit lighter and more floral. Any any of that slight oily coating, coating that it does at the start doesn't work in its favour for me. So when you thin it a little with the water, it becomes lighter, it becomes fresher, fruitier, more floral, and just more palatable. Yeah, definitely finish remains short-ish, but it doesn't do any harm. It's just a good, clean, very representative, in my opinion, of Speyside, a whiskey, 10-year-old single malt. Yeah. Now, here's the downside. This comes in at 45 to 50 pounds. <sighs> Sorry, that last round, that last mouthful caught me there. Is it worth that? Well, it's a, it, it is a good dram, don't get me wrong. It's, it's 43%, there's color added, and it's been chill filtered. There are many, many other good 10 year old single malts out there that are over for they're 46 above they are unchill filtered there's no color added and they are not 45 to 50 pounds many 10 year olds so no it may be good but it is not worth 45 to 50 pounds i'm afraid that it, it, it is to me a prime example of as you put in the arm in a bit the flora and fauna range, I think, in most cases, the arm gets put in a bit. So, uh, nice whiskey, good single malt, lovely dram, nice to chat about, not worth the money. Hmm. It is why pleasant, but... So, yes, we uh, did mention many, many other 10-year-olds worth it and here's one for you that i would suggest glen Cadam, 10 year old this for a highland whiskey which i mean uh, highland space side a lot of them play quite similar anyway but this 
to me, has all that nice, sweet, honeyed, floral note, all that playing along. But, but, it's 46%, non-chill filtered, no colour added, and you'll pick it up for 35 to 40 pounds. So look, and I mean, this is really, I can't really do it any other way. This is aimed sort of at Diageo, aimed quite at Diageo. There's no need. It's a good whiskey. It's, it is, this, the Thrusk is a nice whiskey. But there's no need for that price when you can pick up other 10-year-old whiskies where you get all of this, but you get it at a higher ABV, non-chill filtered, and with no colour added to it. So really, there's no excuse for all that stuff. If the quality can go elsewhere and you pay less money for it. So my suggestion is, if you like the Thrusk 10 year old, if that was your sort of thing, I would recommend the Glencadam 10 year old. You're getting off a lot of that sort of same honey floral uh, thing floating through it, but you just get it with better quality, I'm afraid. That's nice. Yeah, it is nice. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. I shall leave it there and uh, just say to you, thank you very much for joining me. Pleasure as always. Thank you very, very much to my patrons. If you wish to join that group, of course you do. Everybody wants to join that group. Uh, the details are below. Till the next time, my friends, here's your good health. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching my video. Please click and subscribe to be notified of further content.